The final section of chapter 9 is concerned with non-ideal gas behavior and by non-ideal gas behavior we mean that our gas doesn't follow the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law says PV equals NRT and it was developed using um, five postulates that we stated in the section on the kinetic molecular theory. So the reason why a gas may not obey the ideal gas law is because those five postulates are not always true. So one of them, the postulates stated um, that the volume of a gas is negligible. And that might be true if the um, volume of our container is very, very large, then the tiny little gas atoms and molecules they don't take up much space. But if we start compressing our gas and compressing our gas and compressing our gas, then we could um, see that we get to a point where the volume of the gas is actually a considerable part of the volume of the container. Now, the other thing that we said is that there are no forces between the gas particles. Now, this isn't always strictly true. Um, if you think about um, a sample of water, of liquid water, and you spill it, you can see that water molecules attract one another. The water will bead. And water molecules in the gas phase would be expected to attract one another, particularly if they are close to one another, like we would expect at high pressure. So this idea that there are no forces between the particles that make up a gas is kind of a little bit bogus particularly when the particles are very close to one another, i.e. at high pressure. Okay, so there we can imagine scenarios where the ideal gas law begins to break down. So the ideal gas law predicts that for one mole of any gas, PV equals NRT, so in this case that would be PV, equals 1 times RT or PV on RT would always equal 1. So for one mole of any, of any gas, if we measure um, the pressure, the volume, the temperature and calculate PV on RT, it would always equal 1. But the truth is that real gases do not always behave in accordance with the ideal gas law. We'll see deviations and therefore those two reasons that I mentioned previously. First of all, gas particles do not have zero volume, right? Remember that any sample of matter occupies space. So this is like clearly not strictly true. And then of course the other thing is that there may be attractive or repulsive forces between the gas particles and I gave the example of water molecules. As I mentioned, these effects are going to be um, obvious at high pressures, and we're going to put in a kind of a bit of a definition of high pressure. We mean greater than about 10 atmospheres, which is around about 147 psi, if you want to put that into some kind of context. Okay, so we have to correct a couple of terms here. If we have attraction between gas molecules or gas atoms, whatever our gas might be um, made of, what that's going to mean is that the pressure that we observe will be a little bit lower than what we would predict by the ideal gas law because this attraction between the gas molecules is going to be lowering the pressure. So we're going to have to add an extra term to get it up to the value predicted by the ideal gas law. So um, a guy figured this out what the nature of this term has to be and it is the number of moles of the gas divided by the volume of your container all squared multiplied by a constant A which is characteristic for your gas. And A is going to represent the attractiveness between your particles. So we can correct for that sort of um, non-ideal pressure in this way. So we've got one thing left to do, and that is to correct for the non-ideal volume, right? To correct for the fact that our gas molecules do take up some space in our container. So 
when we go up to higher pressures, the volume occupied by our gas becomes significant. And you can adjust the free volume, the total volume of the container, to take into account the volume of the gas. So the, the volume that our um, particles have for, um, to move in will be equal to the total volume of our container minus the number of moles of gas multiplied by a constant B. And you guessed it, the constant B is constant for a particular gas. Right? So every gas will have its own B. And the bigger your gas molecule, the bigger this B will be, right? Because this B is representing, you know, the space taken up by a mole of the um, gas molecules. So this represents the uh, volume of a gas molecule. That's what we're talking about there. Okay, good. Okay, so we can put that all together. Here's our corrected pressure. Here is our corrected volume. So PV equals NRT. So we corrected our pressure because the molecules attract one another. And we corrected our volume because the molecules take up some space. And this gives us what's referred to as the Van der Waals equation. So the Van der Waals equation will need to be used when we have strong forces between our molecules, and we'll talk about that later, in which case this um, correction to the pressure will become important. And then also when we have very high pressures and then the molecules are taking up you know, a considerable amount of, um, of the container's volume, and so then our corrected volume becomes really, really important. A and B are constants that are characteristic um, of our gas. The more sticky our molecules are, the bigger A will be. For B, that represents the volume that our gas molecules take up, and the bigger our molecules, the bigger B will be. Okay, so that concludes the section on non-ideal gases, and I hope you've, the video was helpful.